Nothing is certain in life except death, taxes, and eventually getting pulled back into Apex Legends. But what if I told you that on your next time coming back to the game, or if you're playing right now and you wanted to improve, then I could take your gameplay, guaranteed, from where it is now, however many kills and however good or bad it is, to looking something like this. Or what if I told you that I could take your gameplay and make it look a little bit like this? Yeah, let's get this uh big fighting right here, you know. Yep, yep, I got I got a zip rail now. Yeah, you do, you bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> so dang clean. But what if you weren't just grabbing clips and grabbing stream highlights, but you were actually doing things that made people go crazy, open their eyes and keep them open with their mouth for many minutes at a time. Kind of like this. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. <laughs> it's just too easy and that's right what if i told you around all of that that there was a blueprint on how to go from where you are now to that level of play well i'll tell you what it's been done before because i showed you the same person the same person who last time i did this five rules video and broke down the blueprint of how they played went from 374,000 subscribers to now over 1.1 million on both youtube and twitch and of course if you've seen that and that style you know who it is it's Fade. Fade, now with, like I said, 1.1 million followers on Twitch, one of the biggest streamers on Twitch in terms of follower count, sub count as well, streaming to over 3,000 viewers most of the time, as well as now his YouTube channel, which is blown up, garnering two to five million views per month simply on gameplays. There is a way to look at how he does this and apply it to your own game. And honestly, today we're gonna take a look at one of his best games that I think he's ever had, break that down and show you how to navigate so that when you go back into Apex Legends, you can start where you are, but end up with the blueprint of how to get to the movement gods level. It's not going to be easy. There is a guaranteed way to get there though. And hopefully as much as you need to learn is going to be offered in this video. So if you still feel you need more, check out my earlier video on Fade and remember to subscribe here because I break down pro players and high level streamers all the time in FPS gamers in FPS games and battle royales. But let's take a look at really where that blueprint comes from before we take a look at the footage here, which is the movement guides. These content creators have been putting together movement guides that you are going to find an extreme amount of value in. So whether it's Fade's 45 minute movement guide that you haven't seen or you have seen, uh, whether it's Asu's old movement guide that to me was the first movement guide that really helped in Apex Legends, all of these things help to tell you that there are ways that are teachable to improve not only the amount of kills you get, the way you look when you're doing those kills, but the fun you're going to be having when you jump back into Apex Legends, or generally when you go back in today and just want to improve on certain skills. But let's start off with really the game that we're here to talk about as we jump into what he considers the best play of his career. That's gonna be at the end, but while we get there, it's gonna be an incredible journey to watch and break down some of this fade gameplay. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this, by the way, as we jump into it. Please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content and you find it helpful. Woo. Pay attention to that. That's going to be a big part of the conversation. alive. I stopped shooting. Nope. Nice wall bounce. 
trying to find an angle. Oof. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, nice mantle. Beautiful. Got the respawn off. Oh, God. Oh, God. Almost got him. Oh, no. Playing with oh, the door. No. I'm taking shots. Could leave. You have my banner. Woo! Oh. oh, he just stood there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Good reload. Great use of movement there. Oh! What? No. Oh! No. No. Okay. Okay. And here's the reaction. Is this the... This is, this is his teammate? Oh. oh my god! What the f Okay, they can leave. Uh now let's go back into a little bit of the conversation that I'm promising, which is to give you I things to identify on why Fade is doing so well here. The first thing to note is how good Fade is at recognizing threats. As we continue to move on in this video, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of play it for you guys so we can talk over it. Fade is going to start demonstrating one of his first rules, which is recognizing when there is a threat and not only doing that honoring the threat before they can become something that challenges his life he's one of the best players at giving other players props without seeing them and that allows him to then never put himself in a disadvantageous place that is the first key that a lot of us do not do that fade does is he is always seemingly at the advantage but it's not because of uh, anything except respecting his opponents and going i'm not going to take that fight i'm not going to hold that door when some one of your teammates can run around i'm not going to do that thing that might make me feel like i'm thirsting for the kill in order to get it, I'm going to keep rotating and keep moving until I find a fight that I know I can be successful in. And that is the first rule that Fade completely uh, abides by here in this gameplay. The other rule is something he's doing constantly with his movement that I looked up earlier in this video. And I want you to see if you can guess it right now. I'm going to give you about a minute and a half, two minutes to watch and guess. If you can know exactly what I'm talking about. And here's a hint. It's a part of his movement. <laughs> this is from the perspective of... I love this edit because this is from the perspective of... The people that he's playing against and their reaction. And you get to see Fade in his ra the Wraith. You see right there? <laughs> You get to see him a little bit. He comes in and out. He's like the boogeyman. He's gone. They're close, too. I would chase that. Locks the door really well. You can see it from that side. This is what Fade's doing. Really good breakdown of, of on the other side, what doing those things can do to, to really limit the choices. But he goes right back. And because his movement's faster, he gets to, on a different floor, with the door not broken, do the exact same thing. Still pay attention for that second that second rule. It's coming up in just a moment here. Huge. We've seen him do that before. Not hits the, doesn't hit the shot this time around. The other player trying to go back at it sees that his teammate's been down. Same situation. Different floor, same problem. Now the ult's gone, and that's one of the things, wasting so much time, you're wasting a lot of the ult counters of your enemies. Goes right back in. Perfect use of going into the void. Gets knocked. He can barely see him. Way to turn aggression into something that they were not expecting. They're reacting to everything. One bullet. 
He's got one bullet. Recharging my shields. Yo, Spitfire right there. No Spitfire. No Spitfire goes for the R301. He's running. This is all mouse and keyboard, by the way, as well. One of the elements in Apex you don't always see anymore. A zip over, probably. Especially at high levels like this, but certainly the best input for movement. Oh, no. Almost hit a nutty shot right there. Good follow up. Definitely in a disadvantage. Wonder how he handles this. Oh, just waits for it. I know. Like that. And it's all good. And this team, this Revenant said, I've done so much. Just get me up. We saw my mother Kiwi. The Kiwi. I love it here. It also leads us to our second point, which is the movement skill that he's using. Have you seen the movement skill? Have you looked at it? Yes, you probably know it's the one that he's using to get up and out of those rooms, those ledges so fast, and then basically jump what it looks like two stories at a time. It's called mantle jumping. And I don't play a lot of Apex where I mantle jump. Movement isn't my main thing. I'm much more of a tactical player. I try to get the at classic FPS kind of firing down uh, an opponent and winning that 1v1. But it, it's to my disadvantage, and Fade proves that. So if you're a player who likes to just shoot, Fade shows us again and again that that's not the most successful way. In fact, learning how to mantle jump is a big part of Fade's dynamic. And if you cannot do it, I have something to point you towards. Uh, I was actually looking up how to mantle jump earlier today because Fade was doing it so much in this video. And I came across a video that said, learn how to mantle jump in minutes. A lot of the guides, Daz makes a great guide, who I got to shout out. He's my boy. But a lot of people have guides that's nine minutes long. And for you, if you want to do that, fine. But in three minutes, 6640, only 216 subscribers. So go show some love. Uh, watch the video. Uh, this will be a fun surprise for an up-and-coming YouTuber. Uh, and I like the video that he put out. So got to show love there. 606040, put this video together and... Obviously, it's done super gliding things, and it's three minutes long. I'll link it in the description. It will teach you how to mantle and uh, just a quick example. For me, example. I didn't even clear, like, completely. And that, I think that comes from just me not doing, looking up and looking down like this. Um, I'm still working on that, but for me, I just want to get the timing down perfectly like that. And it's so simple. It requires binding your, your jump to your scroll wheel, uh, using S, holding on to that mantle. He breaks it down so well. And I wanted to just say that is a huge part of Fade's movement. It's how he's actually getting ahead in so many of these fights. Because while you have a disadvantage of numbers, he's actually finding the way in movement to keep resetting the fight so those numbers dwindle. He can keep working the battle of attrition. And that's what Fade does so well. Before we jump right back into the video, though, I do want to just say that I am nominated for an esports award which is awesome i'm actually nominated for um one of the hosts of the year in esports which is uh my honor and i'm very very excited to to be in that position but i did want to let you guys know that you can actually vote for me so if you want to head over to esportsawards.com slash vote you guys can actually go ahead and vote for your boy um just type in the word rain day and here's the cool thing you guys can vote every single day let me see if i can actually get the type in boom there i am cast your vote uh and Vote every single day until November 14th. So thanks, guys. Just want to show that out. Let's get back over into the video. So now we know what he's going to do. He's using zip line super jumps there. But we'll, we'll start calling out the mantle jumps so you guys can be aware of how he's using that to really gain extra space. Very sparing with his tactical. He knows that that's a get-out-of-jail semi-free card, so he's going to hold on to that, which is good, as he should. That guy wasn't randomly on the balcony. Loves to get high ground. But another element is the characteristic of how he likes to play. A lot of you think and may be looking at this going, I wonder if he's a defensive kind of player. Think about it. Because I'm not quite sure. In fact, that's going to be our next point. It may look like he's on the defensive, but is he really? Good wall bounce there. Goes back up, super jump. Jumps back down. 
Nice Mastiff kill as well. And here's just his teammate reacting to it. <laughs> I love seeing the reactions. He's just sitting back like, this is a show, man. This is a freaking show. Normal bunny hop slide into a wall bounce. Goes up, goes down, and then goes out. <laughs> Holy shit, they can't dude, even see him. Insane. They can't even see him. <laughs> now we've got we've got four. Uh, we got five total tips, right? So remember, this is a huge element as we jump into really getting into what is going to be the greatest play I think I've ever seen almost any in game have, and also Fade have himself as well. You'll notice the mantle jumps in here, but one of the other things that I want to dissuade you guys of thinking is that Fade is a defensive player. He's extremely aggressive. While he's constantly on the run, he is not the type of player that actually is playing passively. And it kind of leads me to uh, ask you guys a question as well. What kind of player are you? Are you a more passive player? Are you a more static player? Are you a conservative? Are you aggressive? Because when you look at what Fade is doing, the only reason he's able to do this is because he is the one who is really making the plays. Kind of like um, uh, L in, in, or Light Yagami in Death Note, one of my favorite animes. It's about a detective and someone trying to uh, run away from the detective and both of them setting traps, playing that cat and mouse game. Excuse me. <coughs> oh my, wow. Well, it's live, so things happen like that. Playing that cat and mouse game. And one of the elements of what makes it interesting is they both feel like they're reacting to each other, but they're both setting traps. The greatest part about what Faye does is he, in many ways, looks like he's running away half the time, but he's setting a trap for the players to run into, whether it be going on high ground, having them chase him, knowing he's going to have the time that they they don't use mantle jumping to heal back up, a, a door that will allow him to stall and make sure he's very clear where one of the two or three other players are so that he can now deal with the other two players who are not chasing him and catch them by surprise. Either way, he wants to dictate the pace of the game. And that, to me, is where you can look at your style of play. And if you need to get into trying to become as good as Fade, well, this is really going to be your answer. Uh, a static type of player is going to let the game, uh, going to do what they do no matter what. They're not going to adjust to the game. We have friends like that. They're going to give you their one kill, 600 damage, and they're just going to do that every game. Some players, though, are adjustable. You know, if they're feeling it, they might actually have a bomb game. They might get aggressive. They might feel happy. If they're playing by themselves, maybe they'll be a little bit more conservative. There are also players who want to be stealthy, that traditional BR style of play. Are you that player? Because if you are, there's no problem. Games like PUBG, Warzone, they benefit a lot from those styles. But in Apex, it's, it's harder to be passive more so than it is then it is harder to be aggressive because the aggressive player usually is the one who sets the tone dictates pace and has people reacting to them and that gives them an inherent advantage so that's one of the rules that fade continues to stick by and if you want to improve your game you'll have to apply as well Huge shots there. Sorry for the sneeze, guys, by the way. This is live, like I said. We're in the studio. Great shots as well. Fate also, look at this, recognizes threats. He gets one down, wants to go heal, goes, closes the door, but then he goes back to the new castle because he recognizes that he's going to have to fight 2v1 yet again. But then the interaction, the punch, the most efficient way to get that 30 health back it's early games, and Newcastle doesn't have a gold res, so it's not going to be a higher health uh, revival, so he can guarantee that that's going to knock again. And then using Newcastle's own shield by applying that same pressure, forcing him out, and then being able to get that kill. Another thing here with the flatline is going to be exposed, and it's a great lesson. It's it's one of those problems a lot of players have that they don't know that they have. You're going to see Fade do it in a way that is how we should be doing it, but I'll point out the way that we normally do it, and that it doesn't go well. Huge. Bad climb. Fade would never climb like that, but we would climb like that, right? Very, very obvious 
uh, absolutely not changing the pace of the fight. I'm scared. It's not aggressive enough. He's not forcing Fade to do anything there. So the Pathfinder just gets an easy couple of Mozambique shots to the dome. Also, did not recognize the threat, did not honor the opponent. He climbed right up into Fade, and Fade just shot him. Fade would never do that because he would be honoring that that shotgun shot here could actually hit him. And so he's constantly playing as if the player is good enough to take him down. It's hard to do, but that has put him in a great spot. Now, an another thing to talk about here is his loadout. And his loadout kind of gives us our fourth rule here, our fourth and fifth rule in two different ways. If you want to be this aggressive, if you want to play like Fade, you've got to pay attention to having a shotgun in most of these situations. What he is doing as he's trying to locate around the building is very hard to do without a shotgun. There's a couple of specific reasons why. Now watch this interaction here. Long spray, probably the longest spray you've seen him do. Watch him pick and choose this moment. Watch him. He's got it there. He's in. He's out. He's in. Because he's not getting fired at. And then he's ready to go back out whenever he needs to. That is another element to pay attention to. Still using cover. Not blazing in. How many of us would have blazed in knowing it's just one? Look at the skill Fade has. But he's still treating it with such care. Goes all the way down. Like that? Goes against the wall. Trying to do some funky stuff. You got to admit it. Another double jump as well. Going into the Mastiff. Early damage. Early pressure. And finishing power. That shotgun gives him everything. But notice the way that he's using both of these both of these weapons. As we just quickly get ready to go into the ultimate finale. Which you're going to want to see. It is a, insane. You Look at this. It's even crazier. His high movement is capable because of shotguns. And the reason is because shotguns do not give you for the most part, a movement speed penalty, even when you're aiming down sight. So you could be more accurate, you can tighten those shotgun spreads and actually be more lethal, but you're not sacrificing your movement and making it easier to hit, which is for a movement player so important. It's one of the reasons he didn't pick up the Spitfire. And even though the R301 is a pretty similar slow, although you may not think it, those weapons slow you by about 50% every single time that you're holding them and aiming down sights, which means you've got to go hip fire, or you've just got to basically use them when um, you have no one returning fire. And that's not Fade's situation. A lot of us, though, do not think about weapons that way. We'll pick this up. We'll pick that up. We'll pick a, a Hemi. We'll pick a Spitfire. We'll pick a, a L-Star. We'll pick a Wingman. We'll pick a Shotgun. And those will be our games for the day. And we'll find no consistency. But if you want this type of consistent play, you need to realize that high-speed weapons are going to be important. Now, he also picks up the Flatline, which is different. Because for me, this just demonstrates that Fade knows that the bang worth the buck even though I will get slow with my aim down sights, is beneficial as long as I find out that I'm going to be able to pick and choose my moments of fighting. And that's what he does using cover so well. It's something Imperial Hal does so well in his five rules video that I break down, and it's something that Fade does well too here. If he's going to use the AR and not the shotgun, then he's going to pick and choose his moments of when he's exposed and then jump right back out. So he's never vulnerable to standing there and trying to do a 1v1 gunfight that all of us do and all of us get punished for. All right, the last thing is coming up here and the time to enjoy this video is now. As we have learned those blueprints of what Fade's, Fade does and how you can start applying them to your game. But this, this is just a masterclass, baby. This is, whoo, it's going to be special. Let me tell you. And again, if you guys are enjoying this video, I'd love a like. A share is amazing, but also just watching is enough. A like and watching is enough. And staying tuned on the channel if you want to see more like this. And who you might want to see as well. More fades? Somebody else? Let me know. Broken down a lot of different play styles here on Radio Gaming. We'll continue to do so. Amazing use of the Octane Jump Pad. That's just a little bit of a glimpse as to what's possible. There's an Octane trying to compete with the movement as well. Fade knows it. I feel like that might just stir a little bit of internal competition for him. So I wonder if he's going to go out hunting. 
the easiest puns come to mind when you look at stuff like this. Catching a fade, oh, that's no problem. It's been said thousands of times before. Come on, as a Kramer, I'm kind of scared. Oh, wow, that more. But when you consider even the movement elements of it, fading in and out of vision, the peripherals. And, you know, really, when you look at <laughs> a lineup, you look at a lineup of players that he's gone across, 19 so far, that have been bested by this man's skill. Still with now another teammate to go to help him out. But look at that teammate standing in the middle of the open space. Getting shot at. Rarely peeking. Now hitting a shield battery. But is it a day late and a dollar short? That's what they're trying to find out. And it is. Puppy Girl goes down, but not following the tenants of Fade. What were those tenants? Not recognizing and honoring the threat. Didn't hit that shield battery around enough oh, safety. No. Definitely stood out there and just tried to fire back. Instead of using these high mobility weapons. And making sure that they're in an advantageous position before they fight. And talk about Fade not willing to take the fight yet. We'll grab the banner. We'll swap out the backpack as well. No need for that shield. Because if he has to use his knockdown shield, well, that means game over, ladies and gentlemen. Two squads left. It's a 3v1. And Catboy, a.k.a. Fade, is trying to find a way to use all nine of his lives here to get his 22nd kill in this game. All three would do it. Oh, boy. I bet the Silver Lobby is looking back, wondering what just happened here. What kind of luck did I just get? I'm reaching out to Apex. That's not a Silver Lobby. Oh, it is. It's just not a Silver player. It's somebody who's taken all these tips that we talked about, understood the blueprint, and then just taken their talent and worked at it. The difference between doing what you do now and doing what Fade does, yes, there's talent. Yes, there is tracking and processing. He, he processes this game so well, and he knows exactly where these players are. Look at that. Somehow finds the first kill. But the other aspect is repetition. How do you have a stronger punch or a faster punch in karate? You do it again and again and again. How do you have more movement, more confidence, more understanding of how to use the jump pads, how to mantle jump, how to maneuver in these types of situations? You do it again and again and again. But you don't just do anything. You learn the, the strategy. You learn the blueprint. You understand the movement guide. You practice those skills. It becomes second nature, and then you start incorporating it. There's not a LeBron James or a Lionel Messi or a Cristiano Ronaldo that didn't start out learning how to crawl before they learn how to walk, before they learn how to run. To run. It's the same thing in Apex. You're looking at a finished product here that's still improving. You're looking at a house in Beverly Hills that's still going up in value. But there's that starter home, baby. There's that opportunity for you to get in the real estate market. Do it now. Get in your apex real estate market. Invest in yourself. And moments like this will be possible. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And I hope that you share this video and help your friends improve as they take a look at grade. That's been five rules uh, for Fade. And as always, remember to never give up, never stop gaming. Leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.